Hi, it's uh, it's me again. I have decided I'm wanting to share more of my personal experiences of journeying alone. And over the decades, I've had a series of unusual and profound experiences, and they have become the motivation for working, sharing, giving, growing. It's a, it's a powerful thing to have experiences. And I'd like to share more of what I would consider how I typically, typically get into something. I started experimenting in my late 20s with how to um, merge something or to practice something. And I just experimented with my mind, my imagination, my focus, meditation, breathing. I experimented with lots of things, but I'm going to share with you mostly those things that I found really worked for me. And it's typically has to do with combining more than one part of my own mind, which means one part of the mind is direct, forward, aware, incisive, penetrating. And it's always looking for smaller and smaller pieces. It's in many ways a love of discovery. That's sometimes called the jewel function of the mind. The flower function of the mind is spatial perception. Instead of going forward, it's more associated with the ears than the eyes, and it is more around. It is auditorily sensitive on a sensory level, but it's also spatial perception beyond sensory range. So I would combine the alert, focused, eyesight-driven analytical mind, and I would merge that with spatial perception. By this, I mean I would engage the part of my mind that visualized or imagined. So I would use rich experiences of imagination while being focused on something and wanting to penetrate. So if I wanted to learn something about a tree, I would focus on the tree visually mentally, but while focusing, I would expand my sense of space, imagination, and feeling. And that simultaneous experience of two opposites led into a whole series of other experiences. And then I also learned how to increase the tactile experience or the kinesthetic experience or the body awareness sensitivity or the sense of texture or temperature. So this began to fuse different senses. The sense of smell, taste, touch combined with the sense of hearing, combined with the sense of eyesight, but there was always that last little part, which was the mobilization of the desire to have the experience. So the passionate desire to want to grow. For me, my passionate desire to want to grow was based on, and I didn't really understand it then, my desire to leave. It's true. I just wanted out of here. And the reason for it is because my original experiences of seeing the spirit world, literally, experiencing the spirit world, literally, standing there in the middle of impossible to describe 
sequences or layers or spheres, and then seeing them, experiencing them, is, I have to tell you, very motivating. The reality of that kind of experience drove me to want to return to it. So that was what I described, my passionate desire to want to go to where God was, is. Well, it took me decades to recognize that my real desire for wanting to do that was based on a lot of the damage in my own childhood where I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be in my childhood. I didn't want to be in my body. So my tendency was to leave my body to escape the pain. Now, everybody does this to some degree or another, whether you know it or not. I became aware of how much I did it. And then, to my disgust, I was instructed to come into my body more rather than to leave my body and that set up a whole series of different experiences. So I'm now sharing with you more of the experiences that were not designed to leave the body, but designed to be more inside the body while having these synesthesia experiences of combining senses and feelings. And now my intent, my sincerity, has more to do with the experience of the divine, divine love, divine intelligence, divine wisdom in the body. That's uh, fairly new for me. This is really only in the last 10 years that I've actually been willing to be more in the body. I have experimented with it many times in the bones, in the blood, in the nerves, in the thymus, in the heart, in the brain, in the pineal, in the pituitary, and all the time doing it, but for the purpose of being able to leave. I'm now more aware than ever that I want to live it here in the body, experience it directly with my own heart, and my sincerity in wanting to do that is my passion to want to live it authentically, not just experience it with my eyes closed. I want to experience it with my eyes open and my eyes closed, and I want to experience it while living, breathing, walking, eating, sleeping, and have no exception to the hour of the day or the month of the year that I'm able to do it. I really prefer to do it 100% of the time. And then there are experiences I want to share, which is about something I really worked on, and it came. And I want to share with you a sequence of how those work. And then there are moments where something came, and I wasn't planning on it coming. It just dropped in. And there's quite a number of those, and they're they're very beautifully serendipity. But I also like to share with you, as my own comprehension increases, more about what they mean to me now than they did 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Because now they're richer in detail, and they're richer in their omnipresent capacity to continue. So one of these experiences, just to make this talk worthwhile, is that one day I was meditating with eyes closed and my inner vision open. Now, I'll explain part of this. What I mean by inner vision is that literally with eyes closed, it's as if my eyes were open but faced inward. And the only thing I could say when that occurs for me the clarity of the light is vastly beyond physical light. And the detail is not 3D or 4D. It's more like um, 8 or 9 or 10D. And the, the realness 
the reality of it is so vastly more refined and actual that by the time I come back and look at the physical world, you realize the physical world is transitory, temporary. It's all going to fall down one day, the house, the tree, the mountain, the continent. They're all basically, in some way, temporary. But the other inner vision, not temporary. Very real, very long term. And it usually teaches a lesson, and I'm still trying to comprehend the lesson, so I'm not telling you I know what the lesson is. I may not know the fullness of the lesson for many, many years. I'm willing to accept that and invite the increase of that. So one of these experiences, when my inner vision opened and that clarity came, I saw, I saw myself as a young Native American man late 20s maybe, but dressed with just a loincloth, clutching my, my chest as I'm running through a thick forest. And I knew instantly that it was me, and I knew instantly that I was mortally wounded, and I knew instantly where I was going and why. I was actually running through the forest and came against a nearly per perpendicular wall of rock and began to climb up this side of this canyon to a place which was maybe 30 to 40 feet higher than me and got into a place that was a like a, a, a thin band on the edge of a cliff. There was just enough of a, a line of rock, flat rock to lay down on. And I put my head toward the sun, laid my head back, and the moment my head touched the rock, I died. My heart had been bleeding from a wound because I knew I had been in a battle. And now that I was dying, I was intent on putting the top of my head toward the sun and dying. The moment I did this, out of my chest, there came this beautiful, magnificent eagle. Now, this eagle was not like any eagle I've ever seen before or since. It was pure white in every detail. And the wingspan was longer than my arms. And it was a magnificently beautiful, powerful warrior bird. And I knew that I was a warrior, and this was my warrior spirit. And as this eagle rose up and extended its wings, it started to fly, and with ease, it spiraled directly up, and it went higher and higher and higher. And then it reached a certain place, what you might describe as the top of the sky. And it was at a place where it was going to go no further. But then the very next moment, I saw myself in a different dimension. And I saw myself no longer a white eagle, but a, uh, a humanoid man. It was me rising through a porthole in this dimension and coming up out of a small hole and no longer being a bird, but being this very powerful ninja-like warrior. And my whole body was covered with sequins of like diamonds of glittering light in all directions, like I had it on an armor of pure light. And I was coming up into a place that was completely dark and I could see coming in all directions millions and millions of ugly, gargoyle-like demons, all little ones, middle ones, and giant ones, and they're all rushing at me from 360 degrees, and they were they were just gonna like try to eat me. And my my only thought was, ah, oh, finally a fair fight. 
And I was so excited to go to war. And then right then as I'm beginning to take my sword, the weapon was innocence. And out of my heart moved this wave of childlike innocence. Vanquished, dissolved, all of the demon-like gargoyles. And the only thing left was me with my heart and the innocence. And to this day, I'm still seeking the deeper meaning of the innocence. I know it has a correspondence to all children. So it was a childlike, innocent heart that I'm currently unable to occupy. No, that's just the reality. I'm, I don't overrate my capacities. No, I don't have an innocent, childlike heart. I would like to one day and experiences like this, they tell me it's possible. I still like to do the other combat all too often. I would probably use a sword here or a, yes, I still like to do just be, ah, being the, the weapon is childlike innocence. Yes, yes it is. And I'm looking forward to one day, day being able to do it. I just, um, just not today. I, I'll try again tomorrow. So this is one of a series of experiences I'd like to share. And if you have your own feelings about it, yeah, you can share with me too. Okay. See you next time. Thanks for coming.